resisting arrest and among similar, similar charges. Possession charge in connection with having heroin in a restroom at Sheets on Wilkesbury Township Boulevard on October 7th. Now, after leaving the courtroom today, police arrested her for assaulting an officer. She was jailed at Luzerne County Prison for lack of $40,000 bail. Two Kingston police officers were suspended for a drunk driving incident in September. Officers John Sosnowski and Jonathan Karinski were driving in ATVs on Zerby Avenue in Edwardsville in the early morning hours of September 29th. Karinski flipped over his ATV and Sosnowski swerved his vehicle and struck a tree. Sosnowski was charged in October with two counts of driving under the influence and summary counts of speeding and operation of an ATV on street. Karinski was charged with these same offenses in November. Their suspensions are effective immediately and will be in place until February 10th. Both of their cases have been transferred to Luzerne County Court. A formal arraignment is set for January 9th. Police in Hanover Township say a phone scammer scammed an elderly victim out of thousands of dollars after they told her that her grandson was in a car accident. According to police, the scammer called and identified himself as her grandson. He told her that he was arrested in another state after a car accident and that he needed her to post a $3,000 bail to get him out of trouble. Another male who said he was an attorney then got on the line and told her to purchase a green dot money pack card for the requested amount. Scratched off the code and tell him what it read. The woman stayed on the phone until the man confirmed the receipt. After the phone conversation with the suspect, the woman contacted family members who said her grandson was not in any trouble. Hanover Township Police are warning residents of these phone scams. Anyone with information is asked to call your local police department immediately with all information. Leo Gladzik was set free after a judge granted an amendment to his bail conditions earlier today. His attorney, Joseph Sklarowski Sr., came to an agreement with the district attorney's office over the proposed modification. Gladzik will be allowed to visit his family members outside of the county for the holidays. Sklarowski filed a petition last week in county court seeking permission for Gladzik to visit his mother in Clark Summit and his three children in New Jersey. Gladzik was convicted by a jury of a single count of theft earlier this year. He is appealing the conviction in state superior court and is allowed to remain free on $25,000 bail during the appeal process. Judge Lisa Gelb approved today's amendment. The 11th annual Sounds of the Season will get underway this Saturday and tonight our Gary Perna headed to the Wilty Center inside the Hazleton Eller Area Elementary Middle School to talk with those in charge of the event and tonight we have a sneak peek of what those who will attend this, this Saturday night. Tonight, musicians and vocalists were preparing for the 11th annual Sounds of the Season at the Alice e. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle. Hazelton Philharmonic Director Bob Lagana said tonight is the last practice for the group. Putting the finishing touches on it, uh, there's a lot of uh, excitement and electricity in the air in, a, in an event like this because we're all getting together in the same place at the same time and now with all the, the technical work that's being done in the background, it makes for a real interesting uh, rehearsal to say the least. Lagana said everyone in the orchestra can't wait for this event each and every year. Well, it's a great, I think this is, this is a great time for everybody. First of all, the music is inspirational to begin with. Then when you hear a, a beautiful combination of an orchestra and chorus and soloist, it just, it just enhances the, the uh, Christmas season to a, to a degree that you normally wouldn't be able to find. I mean, shopping is nice and listening to Christmas carols, but when you actually can perform and have a, a great time with other people and, who are enjoying the same thing, it's a, it's a new dimension for Christmas, that's for sure. According to the director, every year is different from the last. Each year has its own its own uh, type of feel to it. This year, this year is going to be, I think, it's going to be a nice combination of classics and some things that people haven't heard for a while. Most of the musicians and singers have been here since the beginning, 
As orchestrally, probably two-thirds of the, the musicians have been here before for most of those 11 years. Each year, though, as far as the choir is concerned, or the vocal contingent of the organization, uh, or the show, rather, uh, it, that changes from year to year. Now, the, the Freeland Community Choir is here with us. I, I believe this is the fourth year running, and they do a fantastic job, and they're, I mean, they're really, really uh, an enhancement to the show. Lagana had this message for everyone at home considering coming out to the event. Well, if you're looking for a way to get yourself set up for the Christmas season, this is the way to do it. Uh, I mean, you're going to hear some really great entertainment. Uh, the, the electricity in the air is really, really great. And uh, come down and join us. There's nothing like a live performance of, of Christmas fair to, to uh, really get you started on the Christmas season. The 11th annual Sounds of the Season will be taped in its entirety, and WYLN will be airing it throughout the holiday season. If you are interested in attending the Sounds of the Season, tickets are $10 for adults, $12 out the door, and kids under the age of 12 are $5. The 2014 Sounds of the Season will kick off this Saturday. Doors open at 6, and the performance starts at 7 p.m. These seats here in the auditorium are expected to be filled with everyone waiting to kick off the holiday season here in the greater Hazleton area. Reporting for WYLN's Late Edition at the Alice C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. And if you would like to see the sounds of the season with your family, WYLN has two family four-packs to give away this evening to some lucky viewers. Again, the Sounds of the Season concert will be held at the Wilty Center in Hazleton this Saturday, December 7th, beginning at 7 p.m. For your chance to win tickets, call us right now at 570-459-1869, extension 1172. Leave your name and number, and we will pick two lucky viewers' names at random. Now, this is for our live 10 o'clock newscast only, so call now and good luck. It's a special time of year, but for many, it's a difficult time. Thousands of volunteers with the Salvation Army work tirelessly during the Christmas season to help raise money for families in need. Today, WYLN spoke with one of those volunteers who braved the cold to help those less fortunate. Carrie Dennison certainly is one of the many happy-go-lucky bell ringers that you'll see around the area during the Christmas season. Volunteer bell ringers for the Salvation Army are hard to come by, and Dennison says it's an important job to help bring joy to thousands throughout the area during the holiday season. Right now, they're really in desperate need of volunteers, uh, especially for these outdoor locations. Uh, this is the, the main gift-giving season of the year, and this is when they raise most of their money through donations, so it's very important if we could get volunteers. Tennyson was outside the Walmart in Hazel Township this afternoon when WYLN stopped by. As we talked with him, several stopped by to put some loose change and even some crisp bills inside the bright red tin bucket. I mean, people say all I have is change, but actually your change can change the world. They do a lot of good with, uh, with the money. It adds up. Even the pennies, they add up. If you happen to stop by any location in Hazleton where a Salvation Army bell ringer is, money you donate will stay locally in the greater Hazleton area to help families in need. It's, uh, it's used at the soup kitchen in Hazleton, and uh, right now they're remodeling. I don't know if people know it, but the soup kitchen closed uh, in November and it'll be opening back up in January because they had extensive mold damage. And I, I volunteer at the soup kitchen as well, and um, the hot water heater broke one of the last days that I was there. So uh, the donations will be going to uh, help the soup kitchen. If you haven't had the chance to donate, Dennison says the volunteer bell ringers will be out spreading Christmas cheer while raising money until Christmas Eve. A long-standing holiday tradition will take place at one local parish this upcoming weekend. Christ Lutheran Church will hold its 16th annual Chris Kindle Fest this Saturday, December 6th and Sunday, December 7th. Hundreds of people have enjoyed what the festival has to offer over the years. The event celebrates the Christmas season by featuring activities that are sure to brighten your holiday spirits. 
and uh, it's a, a wide array of activities for uh, all ages. There is a, a very elaborate nativity display that includes narration and music and lighting uh, that is something spectacular to see. There's also a tea room where you can relax with uh, and enjoy homemade scones and tea and wassail. There's uh, shopping possibilities with our craft displays and with our tea room gift shop. Of course, there are tricky trays and visits from St. Nicholas and live entertainment throughout the event. Once again, Chris Kindle Fest will take place from noon until 5 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Luth Lutheran, the Christ Lutheran Church in Hazleton. Patrons are asked to use the Green Street entrance across from Hazleton City Hall. The fourth annual Senior Citizen Breakfast is slated to take place this weekend. The Hazleton Area School Board, the Nutrition Group, District Administration, and employees would like to honor the senior citizens of Hazleton and the surrounding areas by providing a free breakfast. The event will take place this Sunday, December 7th, at the Maple Manor Elementary and Middle School at 1700 West 22nd Street in Hazel Township from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. If you would like to make reservations, you can call 570 4 459 extension 3190. The breakfast is also open to the public. The cost is $6.50 for anyone under the age of 59. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up, the basketball highlights continue with Eric DeBerardinas takes us to the hometown to check out this year's Marion Phillies. But first, let's get a first look at our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachik, who's outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. Joe. We're not far away from Christmas, just a couple of weeks away. We're all officially getting set for winter, which is about the third week of December. And we've already started decorating our outdoor uh, weather set with the Christmas trees. And uh, <laughs> you only know what they tell us in your earpiece. Some of us have been uh, decorating the outdoor uh, weather set. Looking pretty good in the background. You can see it's starting to get festive with the lights on. We have some winter-like weather to talk about. Take a look at this winter graphic. We got some uh, winter weather advisories in effect for the western parts of our viewing area. As we do have the chance of some mixed precipitation heading in our direction, I'll let you know when that might get here with the complete seven-day forecast coming up after the break. The annual Sounds of the Season concert will be held December 6th at the Alice C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center. Ring in the holidays with performances by the Hazleton Philharmonic Orchestra under the direction of Robert Lagana, the Hazleton Philharmonic Big Band Sound, the Freeland Community Choir, directed by Jackie Wetzel, and soprano soloist Sarah Gardner. Doors open at 6 p.m. Advance tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for children. Sounds of the Season, Ring in the Holidays, is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the Lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Watch Wellness through Physical Therapy with Ting O of Hazleton Physical Therapy and let Ting and his talented team guide you on your journey to wellness, only on WILN. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. 
Cooper Tires for people, not just cars. People who are chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and heavy hitters. More than what your Cooper Tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper Tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. WYLN Weather is sponsored by Coordinated Health. Coordinated Health, we make you better together. I'm good, I'm good. Athletes try talking themselves out of being hurt. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Working past the pain because they want to keep on playing. Okay. I'm good. Coordinated Health understands. As the number one sports medicine team in the region, we get these champions back in the game with pro-level care. Yeah, I'm good. Because we make you better together. Well, not too bad of a day across northeastern and central Pennsylvania because considering where we're at in December, we do know the wicked weather that very often intrudes our neck of the woods. And we do have some winter-like weather heading in our direction for tomorrow. But the good news is things are going to start to warm up and any type of frozen precipitation will change over to just plain rain. So let's start taking a look at the graphic and you can see this next weather system that will start to head in our direction and indications are possibly tomorrow morning we could see some precipitation even into the afternoon hours and you're going to be dealing with some colder temperatures so we may have to start out with a little bit of a mix possibly a little bit of some snow or sleet or even some freezing rain but then temperatures start to increase and then everything will be flipping over to just uh, plain rain. That's the good news. And we're going to have to deal with a decent amount of liquid out of this next weather system that's going to head in our direction. And even going into our Saturday, it definitely looks like we're going to have to deal with some rain and some showers across our region. Now, there are those winter weather advisories, which I said, posted out toward the west. They get underway early tomorrow morning, and then they expire as we head into the early part of tomorrow afternoon as any of the mixture that exists with this next system changes over to just plain rain. 25 degrees outside our station in Hazleton are live Lehigh tire conditions. There you can see the winds coming in at about the five miles per hour. Our coordinated health almanac page for the day 34 and 23 the split in temperatures 41 and 28 are the averages so again below where we should be for this time of year. At least we didn't break any records. 69 and 4, they still stand. 713, 436. Sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. You see there's low temperatures generally in the 20s to 30s and daytime highs generally in the 30s to near 40 degrees. Temperature wise right now, it's cold out there. 25 in New Angola, 29 in Berwick, 28 in Bloomsburg and 27 degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar, all is quiet here so far across the Northeast. But that is going to start to change as we head into uh, tomorrow. Some precipitation heads in our direction. And you can see it's going to be uh, heavy at times going into our Saturday night and even going into, or I should say Friday night, going into our Saturday. Uh, we're going to be looking at a decent amount of precipitation out of this. Looking at the numbers tonight, 30s going into tomorrow upper 30s as temperatures start to rise. We'll be up into the 40s as we head into our Saturday morning. Precipitation amounts, be a decent amount of liquid out of this. Can be looking at uh, some areas could see half inch, three quarters of an inch to possibly an inch of liquid out of this next particular weather system. And then it'll pull away here as we head into our uh, Saturday night. So again, that mixture is starting to occur. And across the Northeast, it's possible that it can even hold off until the afternoon hours. Of course, the later it holds off, the better, because that will allow temperatures to increase, which would mean you get less problems out there in terms of frozen precipitation, because temperatures will eventually start to go up. And as a result, you get the liquid, you get the rain. So at least for now, any precipitation that does overspread our area early 
and it does occur in the form of a mixture, will change over to eventually rain because temperatures will start to go up even through tomorrow night. And then we'll be up about 40 degrees or so, possibly a little bit higher for Saturday. Some leftover rain around and then Sunday looking dry and Monday not looking too bad and maybe some rain, snow showers around Monday night and Tuesday of next week. We want to thank Pennsylvania Lottery, as always, for having these lottery numbers that we can present to you. The Daily, 920, the Big Four, 1779. And the Quinto numbers looking like this. 4, 3, 5, 6, 1, and the Cash 5, 21, 25, 30, 36, and 38. More late edition coming up after these commercial messages. Rita. Thanks, Joe. What a great gift. Pennsylvania Lottery tickets make great gifts, like the new $1 million peppermint payout. Happy holidays. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we're talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought, I was going to lose her, but I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> There's a new game in town, Greater Hazeltonopoly. This year's must-have holiday gift is the Hazelton area's very own version of a world-famous game. This limited edition game is the perfect gift for the holidays, for friends and family, for students out of town, for members of our armed forces. It also makes a great corporate gift, too. It's a fun way to learn about our area and proceed support community projects in Greater Hazelton. But hurry, only a limited number of games are available, and when they're gone, they're gone. Only $14.95 available at these locations. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You're going to meet Dr. Maria McAwee and Pepper. She is a chiropractor for animals. I never knew there was such a thing. If you didn't either, you want to watch. This is fascinating. It's coming up this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. December 4th means just one day away from the tip-off of high school basketball across Pennsylvania. Tonight, an intro to the Marian Catholic boys as they make a public service announcement at Meet the Colts. The allure of their team won't come by lighting up the scoreboards, but rather on defense. We're struggling. We had two scrimmages so far. We weren't putting a ball in the basket, but we stayed in the game with our defense, and that shows a lot because defense wins championships. You can't knock the hustle of the Colts. A reminder, Marion loses only two seniors. So if anything, chemistry on defense should lead them to greater success. No reasonable doubt that Marion Catholic is all about the team. I think our defense is special because we all just know what, where everyone else is going to be. We all just kind of, we're used to each other. We're used to each other's like mentalities. 
you know where he's going to be, you know where uh, the guy next to you, what he's going to do, and really that's what you need to do when you're playing defense because if you're doing something and someone else is doing another thing, it's not going to work out for you. I think what happens is a lot, it's, a, it's a team defensive concept and they all buy into it, so, so everybody understands that it starts with defense and, and if, if they want to be on the floor, they need to play good defense, so that always is an added incentive. Even with the offensive struggles, the defensive blueprint will keep Marion competitive until they are ready to take over on the other side of the floor. That mentality should have them watching the throne in Division Three of the Schuylkill League. Well, I think what happens is, for our, for our standpoint, is you know we don't have any any superstars. We have a lot of guys that are that are interested in having the team be successful, and so they're willing to give up some of their own, you know, maybe their own personal stuff for uh, for the fact that to make the team better. Yeah, we played a lot of man defense, but we'll switch it up. We're, we're looking at you know we got some younger kids here, so uh, you know we'll look to switch it up and and uh, you know really try and just play full court, uh, you know, defense for most of the game. This weekend, the Colts will be competing in the Panther Valley tournament against Panther Valley, Jim Thorpe, and Mahanoy area. The host Panthers missed the playoffs by one game last season, but feel like they can be a threat even in the difficult Division I of the Schuylkill League. I think we have a group that uh, really has been responding well to, to challenges. Uh, they, they're a group that, with a lot of perseverance. I mean, uh, we're in Division One in the Schuylkill League, so we got to play a lot of the bigger schools. So, uh, you know, our guys are, are up against it in that aspect. But it's a hard working group. They've put in a lot of time since the spring. They've done everything that we asked of them. Uh, so it, it, it is a group that we're excited to work with. The Panthers' opponent on Friday is Jim Thorpe. The Olympians are coming off a hard knock 2-20 season and look to avoid an encore with new coach in charge. Right now we just go by, we take it what's important now. We take care of what's important now every day. You know, we're going to see success down the line. So it's just going to be a daily process of building on one success, taking our weaknesses and turning them into strengths. WILN will bring you stories and highlights from high school basketball throughout the winter. Later in sports, we preview the Bloomsburg Huskies as they strive for a national championship. But next, Ann will be back with a recap of today's news. Stories, a glorious story, the sweetest that's ever been told. They found they were handy at making fine candy for family and friends to behold. Word spread through the land that victorious candies would one day be leading the rest. Now that day is here, for the facts are quite clear that victorious candies are best. May this joyous season bring you peace, health, and happiness throughout the coming year. From Valley Pharmacy in Sugarloaf. From their family to yours, the UPS Store wishes everyone a joyous holiday season. Let them take the stress out of your holiday. Come in for all your packing and shipping needs. S.J. Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call S.J. Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Join us this week on Women's Day. It's a season five premiere, and it's all about how thoughts can become things. We'll be joined by Kathy Colangelo of Your Life is Now Life Coaching. We'll be in the kitchen cooking with Kathy. She's going to tell you how you can use fresh seasonal vegetables to brighten up your dinner table. We'll tell you what the Scoopers ice cream flavor of the week is. We'll tell you we have another great giveaway that you can win, and we'll let you know who our inspirational woman of the week is. It is season five of Women Today. It's all about you. Join us. Fire crews rushed to the Laurel Mall this morning around 11 a.m. when a fire broke out in the back of a store. The name of the store where the fire broke out was not released by emergency crews or mall management. However, we are told that it broke out in a storage area behind the store. We spoke with mall manager Amy Rusing outside the mall after the fire was out. 
small fire break out in the back of one of the stores and the, the fire alarms triggered, all of our safety uh, pro protocols and procedures kicked in, the uh, fire suppression system uh, put it out immediately. The fire department was here within just a couple of minutes. Um, we didn't have to evacuate the building. There's no loss of life. Um, everything is contained and under control and the fire department is investigating. Brucing says the mall does have procedures in place if the fire would have spread. We, we do do drills. We're, we're prepared for an emergency and I'm very, very grateful that that's the case. Again, no injuries were reported. Hazel Township firefighters along with APTS responded to the scene. The fire this morning at the Laurel Mall is still under investigation. An April 2015 trial dates have been set for two murder suspects involved in the deaths of a father and son from Hunlock Township. 73-year-old Ronald Evans and his son, 43-year-old Jeffrey Evans, were found shot to death inside their home on Sunset Lake Road back in April. 40-year-old Holly Crawford was in court today at the Luzerne County Courthouse for a pre-trial hearing. Defense attorneys outlined the evidence which they are still waiting to get from prosecutors to review. The hearing only took a few minutes. Crawford's boyfriend and co-defendant, 32-year-old James Roach, who is also behind bars, declined to attend the hearing today, saying it was within his rights to not show up for court. Roach and Crawford are set to be tried separately in this murder case. We would like to make a correction from last night's news on the McAdoo budget. Council is considering three separate budgets, a three mil tax increase, a one mil tax increase, and a budget which does not include a tax increase. If council approves a budget with a three mil tax increase, a resident with a home assessed at $35,000 would pay an additional $100 a year in taxes. A home assessed at $20,000 would pay an additional $60 a year. If, tax, if council chooses a three mil tax increase, the revenue from those taxes would help fund a street paving project in the borough. Council is expected to make a final decision and vote on the budget at next week's meeting on Tuesday, December 9th, beginning at 7 p.m. A Wilkes-Barre woman was charged with assaulting a police officer back in October. 32-year-old Kristen Dudzik was high on heroin when police responded to the Sherman Hills apartment complex on October 22nd. She was found in a hallway looking through her purse. When officers told her to show her hands, she allegedly refused and pulled out an uncapped syringe and stuck it into an officer. She was arraigned today by District Judge Martin Kane on charges of aggravated assault, simple assault, resisting arrest, reckless endangerment, among similar charges. She also pled guilty to a drug paraphernalia possession charge in connection with having heroin in a restroom at Sheets on Wilkes-Barre Township Boulevard on October 7th. After leaving the courtroom today, police arrested her for assaulting an officer. She was jailed at Luzerne County Prison for lack of $40,000 bail. Now, two Kingston police officers were suspended for a drunk driving incident back in September. Officers John Sosnowski and Jonathan Karinski were driving ATVs on Zerby Avenue in Edwardsville in the early morning hours of September 29th. Karinski flipped over his ATV and Sosnowski swerved his vehicle and struck a tree. Sosnowski was charged in October with two counts of driving under the influence and summary counts of speeding and operation of an ATV on streets. Karinski was charged with the same offenses in November. Their suspensions are effective immediately and will be placed will be in place until February 10th. Both of their cases have been transferred to Luzerne County Court. A formal arraignment is set for January 9th. Police in Hanover Township say a phone scammer scammed an elderly victim out of thousands of dollars after they told her that her grandson was in a car accident. According to police, the scammer called and identified himself as her grandson. He told her that he was arrested in another state after a car accident and that he needed her to post a $3,000 bail to get him out of trouble. Another male who said he was an attorney then got on the line and told her to purchase a green dot money pack card for the requested amount scratch off the code and tell him what it read. The woman stayed on the phone until the man confirmed the receipt. After the phone conversation with the suspect, the woman contacted family members who said her grandson was not in any trouble. Hanover Township Police are warning residents of these phone scams. Anyone with information is asked to call your local police department immediately with information. Leo Glodzik was set free after a judge granted an amendment to
to his bail conditions earlier today. His attorney, Joseph Sklarowski Sr., came to an agreement with the district attorney's office over the proposed modification. Gladzik will be allowed to visit his family members outside of the county for the holidays. Sklarowski filed a petition last week in county court seeking permission for Gladzik to visit his mother in Clark Summit and his three children in New Jersey. Gladzik was convicted by a jury of a single count of theft earlier this year. He is appealing the conviction in state superior court and is allowed to remain free on $25,000 bail during the appeal process. Judge Lisa Gelb approved today's amendment. The 11th annual Sounds of the Season will get underway this Saturday, and tonight our Gary Perna headed to the Woltsy Center inside the Hazleton Area Elementary Middle School to talk with those in charge of the event. And tonight we have a sneak peek of what those who will attend see this Saturday night. Tonight, musicians and vocalists were preparing for the 11th annual Sounds of the Season at the Alice e. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle. Hazelton Philharmonic Director Bob Lagana said tonight is the last practice for the group. Putting the finishing touches on it, uh, there's a lot of uh, excitement and electricity in the air in, a, in an event like this because we're all getting together in the same place at the same time and now with all the, the technical work that's being done in the background, it makes for a real interesting uh, rehearsal to say the least. Lagana said everyone in the orchestra can't wait for this event each and every year. Well, it's a great, I think this is, this is a great time for everybody. First of all, the music is inspirational to begin with. Then when you hear a, a beautiful combination of an orchestra and chorus and soloist, it just, it just enhances the, the uh, Christmas season to a, to a degree that you normally wouldn't be able to find. I mean, shopping is nice and listening to Christmas carols, but when you actually can perform and have a, a great time with other people and, who are enjoying the same thing, it's a, it's a new dimension for Christmas, that's for sure. According to the director, every year is different from the last. Each year has its own its own uh, type of feel to it. This year, this year is going to be, I think, it's going to be a nice combination of classics and some things that people haven't heard for a while. Most of the musicians and singers have been here since the beginning. As orchestrally, probably two thirds of the, the musicians have been here before for most of those 11 years. Each year though, as far as the choir is concerned or the vocal contingent of the organization, uh, or the show rather, uh, it, that changes from year to year. Now the, the Freeland Community Choir is here with us. I, I believe this is the fourth year running and they do a fantastic job and they're, I mean, they're really, really uh, an enhancement to the show. Lagana had this message for everyone at home considering coming out to the event. Well, if you're looking for a way to get yourself set up for the Christmas season, this is the way to do it. Uh, I mean, you're going to hear some really great entertainment. Uh, the, the electricity in the air is really, really great. And uh, come down and join us. There's nothing like a live performance of, of Christmas fair to, to uh, really get you started on the Christmas season. The 11th annual Sounds of the Season will be taped in its entirety, and WYLN will be airing it throughout the holiday season. If you are interested in attending the Sounds of the Season, tickets are $10 for adults, $12 out the door, and kids under the age of 12 are $5. The 2014 Sounds of the Season will kick off this Saturday. Doors open at 6, and the performance starts at 7 p.m. These seats here in the auditorium are expected to be filled with everyone waiting to kick off the holiday season here in the greater Hazleton area. Reporting for WYLN's Late Edition at the Alice E. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. It's a special time of year, but for many, it's a difficult time. Thousands of volunteers with the Salvation Army work tirelessly during the Christmas season to help raise money for families in need. Today, WYLN spoke with one of those volunteers who braved the cold to help those less fortunate. Harry Dennison certainly is one of the many happy-go-lucky bell ringers that you'll see around the area during the Christmas season. Volunteer bell ringers for the Salvation Army are hard to come by, and Dennison says it's an important job to help bring joy to thousands throughout the area during the holiday season. Right now, they're really in desperate need of volunteers, uh, especially for these outdoor locations. 
Uh, this is the, the main gift-giving season of the year, and this is when they raise most of their money through donations, so it's very important if we could get volunteers. Tennyson was outside the Walmart in Hazel Township this afternoon when WYLN stopped by. As we talked with him, several stopped by to put some loose change and even some crisp bills inside the bright red tin bucket. I mean, people say all I have is change, but actually your change can change the world. They do a lot of good with, uh, with the money. It adds up. Even the pennies, they add up. If you happen to stop by any location in Hazelton where a Salvation Army bell ringer is, money you donate will stay locally in the greater Hazelton area to help families in need. It's, uh, it's used at the soup kitchen in Hazelton, and uh, right now they're remodeling. I don't know if people know it, but the soup kitchen closed uh, in November and it'll be opening back up in January because they had extensive mold damage. And I, I volunteer at the soup kitchen as well, and um, the hot water heater broke one of the last days that I was there. So uh, the donations will be going to uh, help the soup kitchen. If you haven't had the chance to donate, Dennison says the volunteer bell ringers will be out spreading Christmas cheer while raising money until Christmas Eve. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, Eric D. Berardinas is back with more sports here on Late Edition. But first, let's head back outside to the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek. Joe? Well, the moon is overhead. We have pretty much mostly clear skies across our area. Fairly calm, a little bit chilly, but the wind's really not much of a factor. Now we do have some precipitation that will start to overspread our area, but right now, nothing to show you. It continues to be dry across the entire state of Pennsylvania, but by this time tomorrow night, that's going to be a whole different story. I'll let you know exactly what we can expect with the seven-day forecast coming up in just a few. All Care Home Care the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. NEPA Crafters Unite in the Laurel Mall. Wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Stop by for beautiful and unique gifts for everyone on your list. Northeast Kitchens and Craft Made Cabinetry wish you and your family a joyous holiday. I'm Liz Tolan, Director of Sales and Marketing for WYLN 35. In 2013, WYLN supported the groups you see on your screen by offering either in-kind advertising or volunteer services. At WYLN, serving our community is an important part of what we do. Our name says it all. We're your local network. In 2014, we'll be here as we've been since day one to promote and support our local community. From all of us at WYLN 35, thank you for making us your local network. Every Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. One of the top causes of crime in our area, it's prevalent in our local streets, and if you try it just once, just once, you're hooked. 
This week we're going to tackle a serious topic to get ourselves educated on something that's hurting the community. I'm going to be joined by members of Pathway to Recovery Counseling and Educational Services to talk about the ugly and destructive drug heroin. All this week on The Storm, only on WYLN TV 35. Defense wins championships. It's one of the oldest sports sayings out there. Bloomsburg is just three games away from a championship, and although that phrase may be overused, the Huskies need their defense to continue their dominance this weekend against one of the best offenses in the country. Concord possesses the third highest scoring unit in the nation, averaging nearly 46 points per game, and are led by quarterback Brian Novak and running back Cal Jones. The Huskies are fifth in Division II in points allowed per game, surrendering just 14 on average. In any game, turnovers are crucial, and it's an area where Bloomsburg has excelled all season. I have to give our offense credit. It's all tied into not turning the ball over, too, and then uh, so uh, we need to protect the football and then get the turnovers, and as long as we can win the turnover ratio, I think that gives us a shot to win. The Huskies lead the nation in turnover margin, creating 41 turnovers and committing just 11 on their own. Kickoff at noon on Saturday. Just four weeks remain in the NFL regular season, and for the Giants, that'll be it. No shot at the playoffs for New York, losers of seven straight. Leading up to a road matchup with the Titans, players are searching for wins, searching for answers, and searching for words to describe what this season has been like. Frustration is going to happen. You know, we're all frustrated, you know, from the top to the bottom because uh, obviously, you know, it's been since October 4th since we won a game. So, uh, you know, frustration is going to be there. Uh, you know, we have to let an individual, uh, you know, when they want to win. We have to let their emotions spill over. But at the end of the day, you know, we're a team. You know, we win together, we lose together. I really don't know which, which necessary word to use. Um, man, I don't think it's the word frustrated anymore. Um, we've earned where we are, uh, we're at where we're at, and um, we got to grow. The Eagles and Seahawks, both Thanksgiving Day winners and both seemingly Super Bowl contenders. Philadelphia has not lost at home since last year's playoffs, but had a tough test of going against the league's best rushing attack and one of its best defenses. If the Steelers want a chance of winning their division, they must win on the road this Sunday against the Bengals. Pittsburgh is hurting on defense, but there's a chance outside linebacker Jarvis Jones makes his return against Cincinnati. Jones has been out since September with a dislocated wrist. Rex Ryan still has a job with the Jets, but that may not be the case for very long. New York has won just two games this season and has to travel this week to a Minnesota team that has been very gutsy. Cowboys playing on Thursday night for the second week in a row. Dallas hoping tonight goes a little bit better than the Eagles feast of Tony Romo on Thanksgiving. A reminder, Joe Garbacic is next with the upcoming forecast. Stay tuned. More Late Edition is headed your way. There's a new game in town, Greater Hazeltonopoly. This year's must-have holiday gift is the Hazelton area's very own version of a world-famous game. This limited edition game is the perfect gift for the holidays, for friends and family, for students out of town, for members of our armed forces. It also makes a great corporate gift, too. It's a fun way to learn about our area and proceed support community projects in Greater Hazelton. But hurry, only a limited number of games are available, and when they're gone, they're gone. Only $14.95 available at these locations. Enjoy the special magic that only the holiday season brings from your good neighbor pharmacy, Heights Terrace Pharmacy, Poplar Street in Hazleton. Mary Taylor's Family Hair and Skin Care Centers. 
family friendly, full service, and in business for over 40 years. Wishing you all the joy of the holiday season. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Your friends at Plaza Diner want to wish you happy holidays and many good wishes for a new year of happiness and prosperity. Precision Vinyl Systems, your fence, railing, and deck supplier on Route 940 in Freeland, wish you a joyful holiday season filled with memorable moments to treasure. Things move a little slower here in DSLville. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. The annual Sounds of the Season concert will be held December 6th at the Alice C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center. Ring in the holidays with performances by the Hazleton Philharmonic Orchestra under the direction of Robert Lagana, the Hazleton Philharmonic Big Band Sound, the Freeland Community Choir, directed by Jackie Wetzel, and soprano soloist Sarah Gardner. Doors open at 6 p.m. Advance tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for children. Sounds of the Season, Ring in the Holidays, is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Well, it is quiet, and we're going to stay quiet through a lot of the overnight hours across our viewing area. You can see nothing showing up on our Live 35 Skycast Doppler, but that's going to change as we head into tomorrow, especially as you head out toward western Pennsylvania and in central Pennsylvania. Here across the northeast, even looking at some of the uh, latest model runs just coming in, uh, we may actually be dry through most of the morning, and it may not be until the afternoon hours that we start to see some precipitation overspreading our area. And by then, uh, temperatures may actually be high enough that we may have to worry about literally uh, no frozen precipitation. And if any, just a small amount, that's about it. We can definitely hope for that and hope that that continues to keep on track with, with that aspect. But nevertheless, we have a pretty decent amount of rain that will be heading in our direction before all is said and done. And it's going to stay with us as we head through our Saturday. 24 degrees, our lively high tire conditions outside our television station in Hazleton. And we have been dry, no measurable precipitation since midnight. Temperature-wise right now, 25 degrees in Mount Pocono, 30 degrees at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, 27 in Williamsport, 26 in Sealands Grove, and 27 in State College. Look at Bradford. It's already down into the teens. It's down to 19 degrees up in the Wyoming Valley area from Nanticoke through Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, Pittston, and Lehman. Temperatures continuing to hold up in the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. Satellite and radar... Hey, it's pretty nice out there. Just about clear skies here across the northeast. The moon has been out, so really nothing going on as we head through uh, the overnight hours, at least here across the northeast. But notice some precipitation overspreading central and western PA through the uh, morning hours, late to morning hours. And then uh, by the afternoon, of course, the precipitation comes in our area. We're going to have to deal with that even as we go into our Saturday. Some on and off showers of rain and temperatures will be up actually into the 40s across our area. And before all is said and done, we're going to see a healthy amount of precipitation. Good news is, again, this is going to be liquid. We can be looking at uh, widespread. Uh, this model run, I think, is going to be slightly higher than what we're going to really receive, but I think a widespread half inch to possibly as much as an inch across our area of rain. And it won't be until later uh, Saturday night that this whole system moves out. And then Sunday, at this point in time, looks like it should remain dry. 
across our area. So there comes that next system tomorrow heading in our direction. And then uh, again, uh, we're going to have to deal with some milder air as we head in our direction the next few days. I mean, there's not going to be any widespread, excessively cold air across our area. Of course, some people might say, hey, 30s is kind of excessively cold, but not when you compare it to some of the weather we've had already. We know what can happen throughout December. And you know what? If this pattern holds, even with those temperatures through the rest of the year going into next year, even for winter, you know what? That's actually not too bad. But there are a couple of chances of some precipitation here and there. Still watching what's going to happen Monday night into a Tuesday. Maybe some rain, snow showers around, maybe nothing, or we may have to deal with a storm. But um, we're not hyping that up because it's just too far away. Too many things can happen. I'll take the temperature on Saturday, but yeah, you know, not the bad. rain. That's what I don't want. Yeah, take the umbrella. Oh, if you're yes. going anywhere yes, outside. Sir. The man who only started using an umbrella a couple years, a couple days, weeks, months. I have never owned an umbrella in my life. He never has yes. either. As a meteorologist, I was shocked by that. I braved the elements. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. The brave soul. Yep. See, my schedule's all indoors now that high school basketball starting football's over. Oh, yeah, lucky over. you. I'm all indoors. You don't have to worry You're about, not have to yeah. worry about, you know, layering up at 15 layers for football, but... Well, it's exciting, so well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what uh, next year brings us. They're still in it, so we got a little semi-local team. All right, well, we'll send you outside when we think it's cold enough just for you. You know what, you know, we, Eric, you know, this, this chair does wheel, so I think we both should just wheel her off the set right now. No, just, I'm nicer than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Sorry, on her side tonight. <laughs>